Hello and welcome. Today we are going to look at the model builder software with InLab Software 22 for a model for a crown case. So here you can see that we are in the administration phase of the InLab software. So we've identified our two crowns under restorations and on the ondontogram identified both the 1.5 and the 2.5. However, you'll see that we'll also be able to select the model um, arches here. So we've identified both the upper and the lower model. Uh, and then on the right hand side, we can identify the machine. So you'll see prime print is now available, um, as well as a generic third party printer, if you are using a third party printing um, system as well too. When we move forward to the model phase, you'll notice that the scan phase is grayed out. That's because these are intraoral scans from the connect portal. So we can work through the model step as we would for a traditional crown case. So you can check out that video as well if you need reference to what each of these steps are completing. Um, but essentially we're just preparing the case for the crown. Uh, itself on both the 1.5 and the 2.5 premolars. Uh, however, what we're also doing in the last step of this model phase is we are activating the model building software. So the idea is that we can have a model uh, ready to go through the 3D printer uh, and then at the same time design our crowns and then send them to our mills, whether that's a third party mill or an MCX5, MCXL, or maybe even a prime mill as well too. So here we're basically setting up our uh, model axis, so identifying obviously things like the midline, the occlusal plane, and then we're going to set our jawline to ensure that we have the proper jawline noted for uh, the working arch, which in this case is the upper jaw. Uh, now, when it comes to the model builder, uh, if we did not select in the administration that we are doing crowns and a model, we also would have an opportunity, which I'll showcase just shortly here, to be able to identify um, that we're doing a model with the uh, shortcut. However, if you do note in the administration, uh, like I did at the beginning here, um, that we were identifying upper and lower models, it will set that up as the last step of this model phase, which will open up the in-lab model building software. Um, now, what's important here for when when we're doing the margins is we really want to verify that we're happy with where the margins are placed. Now with the intraoral scans, it'll automatically find it if it can, uh, and or it could be that the doctor also identified them on their end. Now what's really neat is when the margin is selected at this step in the software, that will transfer over to the model building application, which is handy for if you are doing removable dies because it'll identify the margin for those dies based on what we've identified here. So here I'm just setting the insertion axis, so identifying how is this going to be inserted post-manufacturing, and I can identify it for both uh, quadrants uh, as needed. Uh, now you'll see that the last step of the software right now is create models, so that it will of course activate the in-lab model builder. Um, however, I'm also able to uh, identify uh, the shortcut, so if I hit the dense splicer on a logo, you'll see that the option for apps comes up. If I select that, any available application will show up here. So here you can see model builder. So if I selected model builder, it would allow me to do so at that point. Now if I hit create model, what it's instead going to do is it's going to obviously start the actual uh, model builder application. Okay, so at this point in time, we're going to select create model and we're going to be able to activate now uh, the ability to um, transfer that file over into the model builder. So what's really great about this workflow is any changes that we made to the model when we were editing. So if we trimmed away any excess uh, tissue or scan or anything like that, that would reflect here now in the software. But as well too, like I mentioned, the margin is going to transfer over to this step of the software. So now um, for this particular workflow, I am showcasing uh, the what's known as the, an alveolar model. So that's a working model. So identifying either for study models or even for um, something with removable dyes like a working model. So here I'm selecting clean model. Now when I'm selecting clean model as the first step, what I'm identifying here is I want to identify where the borders of this um, model base is gonna be created. So I can double click to basically start, single click to tag down that line. And then I can basically rotate my model with my cursor to be able to, of course, um, rotate as needed to then double click in another area. So here we can see that we've essentially cleaned up the edge here. So basically what we're identifying here at this point in time is where the borders of this uh, model will finish and where the base will start. So we're able to trim away anything that's not relevant for the actual case itself. So obviously being able to save material where items aren't needed, maybe more of the palette isn't actually needed. So we can trim that portion away by removing that from the borders. Um, under display objects, I can obviously remove my upper jaw to focus just on the one jaw uh, at a time, or I can choose to have them both there. You'll also see that the margin are following there. So the margins are obviously being transferred over from the CAD software. Um, so I'm just fi fixing up my margin here to identify where I want my base to start from. 
And then you'll see on the right hand side, there's uh, two types of uh, parameters that I need to set. So the upper model height and the upper base expansion, and then the same for the lower jaw. Now I can also choose to link the upper and the lower jaw, meaning whatever I do to one arch, it does to the other as well. If you, we of course want the model bases to be the exact same size for both arches. Um, now when it comes to the model height, that's referring to how tall is the model base actually going to be. The upper base expansion is essentially the lip that kind of protrudes from the model base itself to give that kind of cleaner study model edge to it. Um, so obviously the, the larger it is, the more it will protrude from the actual base itself. So if we want to save a little bit more material, obviously we can identify a, a smaller number in millimeters here. Uh, and then of course, again, if I mentioned uh, before, you can link the upper and the lower jaw. So it's a way to just have to edit one and not both. Uh, just by selecting link, it'll do basically the exact same for the lower that you've selected for the upper. I now hit apply. So it will now apply those parameters to this model base itself. So once the model base shows up, the next phase of the software will open up, which is the design stage. So here, if it is a working model where I want removable dies, I can create stumps. If this was an implant supported model, I could create a, a space for my dim analogs. Uh, and then as well too, if it was an implant case, I'd also be able to create a removable gingiva mask should I need to, or should I wish to. Uh, so when I move forward to the design stage, you'll see there that it's kind of showing that ghost image of the areas that we're trimming outside of it. So those will disappear in the next step of the software. So here we have our upper and lower jaw with our model base and base expansion applied. So you'll see the option to create stumps. It's another name for creating a removable die. So the tooth root form, um, that's obviously the, the best kind of format for uh, printing, uh, but you can also make it more of a, co a conical format if you choose. Um, and then you can identify if you want a tighter or looser fit for the actual fitting strength. So obviously how tight or loose those dies are gonna fit in the actual model itself. And then once I hit apply, you'll see that those dies become a little bit grayed out. Now create analog is grayed out because the system is very intuitive. So it knows that there are no uh, scan bodies present from Densply Serona. So because of that, it is grayed out. Uh, now, if I wanted to create a gingiva mask here for something like an implant case, I'd have the ability to do so. Now with the uh, next option here in the design stage, it's the ability to add supports. Now, if you have a full arch case here where obviously it's kind of, you know, you can't add a support to the back necessarily, what you can do is select add bar and basically go from one side to the other. Now you can choose to uh, turn off, create a, a opposite bar. So that would be the opposing, not having one, but obviously if you need it for the opposing, you can turn that on. And then you can edit things like the height or the width of the bar itself. So now what this bar allows me to do is if I wanted something like the dense place or in a ball joint, I can attach that now to the back of the bar there. Um, so the other uh, interesting supports you have available to you are the support struts. A lot of people like these to just basically be able to see that the occlusion is dialed in when you have the, uh, the actual arches in articulation. It's just a visual aid to ensure that the model is in full articulation. Once you actually place a, a support, you're always able to highlight it in green by giving it one click with your left cursor. And then you can do things Things like pulling it out further or rotating it or deleting it if need be as well too on the right hand side. Now when we move forward to the finalized phase, a couple key things that you'll note. One, you are able to add a label uh, to identify obviously the patient's name or maybe even the clinic name or laboratory name. But as well too, you're also able to uh, carve out the model, so hollow out the internal portion of the base. This of course saves you a lot of uh, resin in your actual printer, but it also saves a lot of time in the printer because it's no longer having to print all those extra layers. So it is worth mentioning that you do save a lot of time in the print, but also a lot of kind of money ultimately. Uh, um, by saving some uh, extra resin uh, to save those extra layers uh, not needing to be printed. So I do highly recommend in the finalized stage to select carve out model where it says the thickness that's referring to the border edge. I recommend anywhere between two and three millimeters. Then you select apply and it's basically gonna hollow out the upper and the lower without affecting of course the working surface of this model and without actually affecting the area with the removable uh, sty uh, stump sorry, or dies uh, also known as. Uh, so then with the text label, if you select text label, you're able to identify in the text box where you want to actually place uh, the text label for the patient's name or the clinic name, again, whatever you prefer as the operator. Um, so here I'm able to get my model in the area that I want it to be in terms of the side of the model. So I can apply my text label here. So I'm just going to delete here and put demo 
and then I'm gonna double click with my cursor. Now it defaults to being protruding out. If you select that recess option on the right hand side, it will then indent into the print itself. So it is uh, again, operator preference here. Uh, as a final step, you can export. So there's multiple uh, offerings when it comes to exporting here. So the first obviously export to manufacturing. This would be if you are using the prime print to use in the InLab CAM software, it will default to a CAM uh, file. You also have the ability to export to folder or export as STL. So obviously if you export to STL, it will allow you the ability to use it in a third party system, uh, as well as, of course, the prime print. But of course, the prime print, the easiest workflow is for the manufacturing. Now, in another video, I will showcase the ability to do a thermoforming model, but I just want to showcase here. In the beginning, you are able to identify a thermoforming model for things like clear aligners or maybe even bleaching trays. So, that is another offering you can do in the InLab Model Builder. So, stay tuned for that video.